everyone welcome back to the thing about wildlife in a nutshell where you will hear a bite sized story from our guest wildlife first time in their field our lives among nature tend to be a string of funny intimidating or simply absurd anecdotes and i'm going to be bringing these to you through some wonderfully diverse and fascinating voices today You are going to be listening to a snippet from my conversation with Tania Gill who is a doctoral candidate from the Department of Anthropology at the University of Delhi. After being wowed by the range of personalities in the rhesus macaques of Shimla which she studied for about a year during her MPhil, she was keen to study the individual unique behaviors and mannerisms of the species in her very own backyard, the forest fringes of Delhi. Here she is now telling us about some of these monkeys she's been watching so keenly. Hi Tanya, thanks so much for joining me today. So glad to have you here. Hey Shika, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for inviting me. So, why don't you start us off by talking about some of the individuals whose personalities you've been studying in both Shimla and Delhi? So, yes, it was an amazing experience and it was my first experience. So, so yeah, I mean the most interesting part of field that I found there also and in here also in Delhi is the first phase where you start identifying individuals. So, Shimla is popular for uh, this robbing barting bartering behavior of monkeys uh where they snatch um objects from people and then exchange them for food reading about it is different but then getting to see it for over a year it was amazing not amazing for people who were at the receiving end of it but uh, <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean every time i think about um uh, robbing and bartering i think about shimla i think about robbing and bartering and then two monkeys come to my mind every time so there was a female uh, we named her uh, rebecca she used to steal uh, shoes and there was another uh, male who was uh, who used to steal uh, glasses spectacles and both extremely skilled and <laughs> yeah i don't think they ever missed any one chance also interestingly people who studied bart- robbing and bartering in um, bali they had uh, in their group they only had males who used to exhibit this behavior but rhesus macaques which is their amazing both male and female uh, used to engage in this behavior and uh, really interesting because um, uh, for example rebecca used to sit behind a bench where people used to remove sit to remove their shoes so jaku is a temple a hindu temple so you remove your shoes uh, so yeah i mean and unsuspecting victims just sit there and rebecca would be sitting behind them and she will she 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 take one shoe very gently and she yeah she i don't think she ever missed any chance yeah she was very patient with the <laughs> with her skill and she knew what she was doing and then leo who used to steal spectacles he he was i thought was more bolder because i think stealing spectacles take a lot of energy and also you have to go really close to people in order to do that like you have to do it in air so he would sit on the wall of a, of the temple and just wait for people come in and uh, then he would just snatch their specs without even touching them mostly the people would not even realize what happened um yeah, and then they, both of them would just wait near um these people um to get fed yeah it was very interesting to see how that used to happen so did you ever have your spectacles or your shoes stolen by either rebecca or leo that's a very good question rebecca stole my uh, mittens yeah <laughs> i did not wear glasses because obviously i knew what these monkeys are they never stole anything from me but one time it happened uh that i have i had a i had 
one glove in my pocket and rebecca saw that and she came and sat near me so i was i was i don't know i liked it because i was like la wow she is okay with me and she is sitting next to me and i did not know she was actually stealing my glove <laughs> and yeah i had to feed her what that one time because um, yeah there was no other way of getting my stuff back but that's the only event i mean incident i remember <laughs> did they have a preferred food that they would accept in exchange for these things yeah it was i think it was kind of like a spontaneous behavioral experiment uh uh-huh. um so they were used to uh, exchanging these things for uh, a packet of prasad shimla uh, jaku temple has they ha- has a lot of uh, vendors uh, who sell prasad and uh, they have these ready made packets of chickpeas or chana and then they used to getting these packets only and most of the time people don't carry food or anything else in the temple so they have to buy these prasad so uh, i have mostly seen them exchanging any um, object for these packets of prasad this is uh, <laughs> this is quite cool and it's particularly interesting to know that different monkeys would steal only certain objects like yeah. initially because from what i've heard of the bali monkeys i think most individuals just go for whatever is most easy to snatch but it's very interesting to hear that these guys had specific uh, tactics and strategies for yeah. <laughs> how to get to these people yeah yeah i mean there were other monkeys also but these two were extremely skilled <laughs> <laughs> so was there was there any particular reasons why they were named rebecca and leo no so <laughs> not in shimla but that's something i'm doing in delhi i can tell you about one monkey who is a very special monkey who has become a very special monkey so i think this was in september and i was doing identifying uh, these monkeys taking their photographs and i saw one monkey with a piece of uh, mirror as uh, she was holding it like a clutch uh, and then she sat down and st- kept looking into the mirror and i was extremely fascinated and i was like this is the monkey i have to follow and i kept looking at her for hours and she was just looking in the mirror uh, moving it in different directions and i took 100 photos of this monkey <laughs> i could not look at her face properly because i was just looking at her eyes how curious curious she looked when she was staring into the mirror couple of days later i saw an i saw her again i did not i couldn't uh, recall her face or i couldn't uh, id her properly at that time because i did not I mean, it was just the, maybe the second time i was looking at her but she had a piece of glass in her hand this time and she was looking at it exactly the same way she was looking at this piece of mirror earlier and i knew that this is the same monkey who i ended up naming ux which means um reflection or image in urdu um so yeah this time i am i have uh, i'm using this approach of naming the monkeys based on their very correct characteristic behavior or how i find them This is just one story of many. Tanya is currently following a massive troop of rhesus macaques of the ridge in Delhi. She's identified and named over 50 individuals so far. While we were talking about the individuals she's currently following and observing in Delhi, she recalled another macaque from Shimla, Rocky. So Rocky was um from one of our groups and he was a very dominant male and he was named rocky because he was huge very furry mm-hmm. and uh, he didn't have any specific behavioral traits that we noticed he was just dominant and slight uh, slightly friendly and just minded his own business just being a regular dominant male but his only weakness was babies 
he loved cuddling babies <laughs> and he could not see a baby and not cuddle it <laughs> i remember one time i was doing a focal on him and he just started running towards a juvi who was crying i thought he was going to threaten the juvi or bite him but he just picked the juvi and hugged him so tightly i had to stop the focal and take a photo <laughs> and he kept and he was lip smacking at the juvi and he was tightly hugging him trying to comfort it <laughs> Can you explain what a focal is and what lip smacking is? Of course. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, focal sampling is the kind kind of sampling method that we use in behavioral studies. So, we observe a monkey, uh, any individual animal for a, a set uh, time limit. I used to do it for ten minutes, and just observe the animal and record all the behavioral. um events or interactions the monkey or the individual is engaging in so that's called a focal event sampling and uh, what about this lip smacking business that you mentioned it's a uh, it's an affiliative behavioral um uh, a gesture that uh, monkeys macaques do to each other it's it's sort of like a comforting gesture and uh, can be loosely translated to i love you i love you that they say to each other when they lip smacking at each other so it's not a submissive uh, um, inter, um submissive um, um gesture so there are different kinds of uh, behavioral gestures that you see how the monkeys communicate with each other so lip smacking comes under affiliative so it's like when you are trying to interact with someone you're close to or your um trying to comfort them and uh, just tell them that they don't they don't have to be scared in their presence so these monkeys lip smack at each other yeah so what are some of the other kinds of behaviors that you see in macaques that uh, you know you can mm-hmm. classify like this yeah so broadly they are um, categorized into aggressive and affiliative interactions and some are neutral interactions that we don't really understand they just occur so aggressive interactions are i think mostly studied and um one interaction which i think is um, yeah i mean the uh, can be observed easily is chasing how monkeys they chase each other so that's an aggressive interaction and there is one uh, open mouth threat so that's a low level aggressive interact ag- aggressive threat and uh, so the monkeys they just show open mouth to each other and just means stay away or it's a kind it's a way of showing dominance also so yeah these are aggressive interactions and affiliative interactions include uh, all the socializing um, um affiliatively socializing interactions like grooming and it is talked about lip smacking and there's huddling so the monkeys just sleep next to each other um and just uh, with their bodies touching each other that's called huddling and that's also a kind of socializing that occurs and it's pretty cool thanks for explaining those um yeah so this is very interesting of course and these kind of behaviors that you've noticed and you're able to classify or even quantify um you know we now know as a researcher who looks at macaques that this is what these behaviors mean uh some of them are aggressive some are affiliative but what i've seen even in the time that i have spent following macaques and looking at their behavior when they work very uh not work sorry when they interact very closely with people like the groups that you look at as well um very often their body language gets misinterpreted by the people they're interacting with so what are some of these misunderstandings like you have that you have seen uh through your work does it happen often or what happens it does it has happened a lot 
so the most common signal that is misinterpreted is uh, bare teeth um, bare uh, sorry is the t submissive bare teeth <laughs> so what what happens is the monkey monkey shows its teeth uh, if someone is approaching and it happens a lot when a human is approaching a monkey and the monkey is scared but how the human interprets is as uh, the human inter uh, i've seen people interpret it as a threat towards them instead of uh, i mean i don't think it's their fault because uh, we have as researchers i think have not communicated this properly um so people don't really understand these body signals and they uh, interpret some submissive signals as threats and they get scared um so yes yeah, so, uh, svts are the most common um, um signal that is mis misinterpreted um yeah so and and it also happens in areas where monkeys are people have been interacting with monkeys for years so um i think it's the responsibility of researchers and also people just working in these areas to um spread awareness and i don't know just trying to make people understand um, how not just because not just for them to be safe and safely interact with monkeys because they're going to interact with monkeys anyway but um, just as just general knowledge about wildlife and animals in their area they should know about that's so interesting because um i found when i was working with the nikobar long tail macaques uh that of course they show the same kinds of behaviors you know there is uh, yeah. submissive bare teeth there as well and you know lip smacking and those kind of things even though they are a totally different species but uh, interestingly there i found a lot of people uh, you know when they saw them coming at them and showing their teeth a lot of people interpreted that as the monkeys smiling at them and so people found that uh, you know this was a very inviting body language and sometimes especially kids would go towards the monkeys when they're doing that and like you said the monkeys actually scared right when it's doing that so they would panic and sometimes sometimes the monkeys would just run away and sometimes it would result in a negative interaction because yeah. out of fear the monkeys may defend themselves uh, in whatever way so uh, yeah again the same behavior being highly misinterpreted but <laughs> for a completely different reason which uh, <laughs> and yeah I, i i totally agree with you definitely need to communicate these things better hey that, but that's really interesting yeah yeah and in shimla and in delhi people don't really understand uh, these bodily signals mm -hmm. Hmm. so um so right now you know since we've been talking about personalities among all of the macaques that you've been looking at how does one look at personality like how do you know that a macaque is more aggressive or more submissive or what are how do you categorize these so yeah i mean it's so uh, difficult to quantify using uh, one method i will be using uh, i'll be i am observing their behavior at the moment and then i'll start some behavioral experiments to understand how they are interacting with novel items and maybe puzzle how they are solving puzzles so what we do is uh, generally there is a there's a questionnaire that researchers fill out and these questionnaires have different adjectives so which ranges from boldness to a monkey being anxious and from being energetic to um, lazy so we rate these we do uh, so this is based on trait rating so which is not really um, considered reliable and also because i'll be working alone i don't have uh, a research assistant right now who could really you know um, we could do a reliability test on these questionnaires 
So we rate these monkeys, but I'll be doing experiments and then rate them depending on how they're interacting uh, with the puzzles or the novel items. In addition to this, I'm also looking at their behaviors, right? So how they're socializing, the patterns of the behavior will determine if the monkey is sociable and if the monkey is anxious while socializing with other monkeys. And that happens when we look at behaviors, uh, if the monkey is involved in a lot of submissive behaviors and startles a lot maybe, or avoids individuals instead of, you know, confidently just walking up to them and interacting with them. So yeah, just looking at these patterns, we can see um, what are the behaviors that are associated with certain personalities. And because I'm working in a, a, a conflict sort of area where the monkeys interact with humans also. So I will be looking at how they're interacting with humans and that how that pattern influences the personality. And yeah, let's see how that goes. <laughs> Um, there is one more thing, not a story per se, but yeah, so in Shimla, you were observing uh, two groups, right? So one other thing, uh, there was something very interesting how the dominant male's personality, in, which I thought influenced the, um, the, the per, maybe personality of the group. So, the, the, so the, we had one group. Per, um, so this male was extremely aggressive and his name was Dangling Tail. And the entire group was, I felt was extremely anxious. All the, so, so, it, so this individual's personality, the alpha male's personality, sort of, I, I felt influenced the personality of the entire group also. And this other group, which we were observing, had a dominant, had the alpha male who was very affiliative in his way of, ways of interacting with uh, all the other members of the group and wasn't that aggressive. And he was extremely supportive. So this group was extremely confident. The entire group's personality sort of, it just felt was more confident um, compared to the other group. So how the personality of the alpha was actually influencing the personality of the entire group can also be a very interesting thing to look at. So it's not just, so yeah, I mean, just looking at individual differences, you can find out group differences and more details into how a group works and socializes. That hmm, is that very, was, very interesting, I think the fact that a single dominant individual could influence a whole group's personality. This is such exciting work. I can't wait to <laughs> hear about all that comes out of it. I'm definitely going to come back to you a year or two from now once you've done this work because I really want to know more about <laughs> all of the personalities you found and more about all the individuals you're studying now. I'm sure you'll have many more tales then. Definitely. I mean, I think we should collaborate <laughs> and you should look at, look in your field sites and we could just look if there are similar patterns. Yeah. And just find out how we can compare data. Yeah, I, there's nothing I'd love more, honestly. I think uh, there's so much exciting work uh, that one can do in a collaboratory nature. And I think more people should be doing that. And I think we've spoken about this even earlier on the podcast, you know, mm -hmm. that there are so many of us doing very fascinating work in little islands and we don't realize how similar these topics and even, like you said, even just the data itself can be so similar and we have we would have no idea unless we have these yeah. conversations and try some collaborations Absolutely. and comparisons. And yeah, let's, uh, I, I would, that would be amazing. Let's see if that happens. Okay. And if that happens, that is another episode, of course. <laughs> Talking <laughs> all about that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I think there's a lot of exciting stuff coming uh, 
in terms of primatology and the methods being used it's very exciting to see definitely people doing these things definitely now. yeah 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 and thanks so much for sharing all of these things that you are up to <laughs> thank you ishika for inviting me of course <laughs> thanks for listening